Alrighty guys, welcome back. Game number two in our back-to-back -back series here for Division 2, Infested Incorporated versus Cloud 8. I am joined once again by the abdominal long-nosed beaked fella, Plague. How you doing, man? <laughs> That's good, I like that. Doing well, I am doing well. I like uh, I like the names here we got here, Infested uh, Inc. and Cloud 8. Very nice. Someone could take Cloud 9, doesn't that, that team doesn't exist anymore. And right in we go. Hello. Both of these there teams go. ready to go. Uh, Braxis Holdout is going to be our map for this one. It is uh, Cloud 8's map choice that they have uh, locked down here. And a lot of interesting things you can do on this map, Plague. This is probably one of the more unique maps that Heroes of the Storm has come out with so far. I, I, I agree with, with with the infestations and things like that It's and, and the ridiculously hard boss uh, that they have. Um, uh, and, and like you said, just the uniqueness of this map and a lot of different ways you can work around work around it. It's not a terribly, I guess it is a little bit big, but it's not. It's it's still easy to get around with some nice open lanes between both uh, uh, lanes from top to bottom, uh, with a big old middle in, uh, in the middle. Um, here we are going to see. You guys haven't seen it yet, but I see it. Uh, the Haka Man. They're contemplating at least. Yeah, I'm actually seeing it now. I think it was. Uh, I think it, I think it was because. I wasn't the host, uh, was was the issue before. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Dahaka, very good on this map with that global... Um, with that global ability to go uh, all around the map and to any of these vents. Vents conveniently located right on both of these... Um, both of these spawn points. Uh, the beacons, I should say, for, for this map to be able to capture the Zerg. Right. Uh-oh. We are going to see the Ragnaros ban again. Did you mess something up? I saw a host start. Whoa. Just got the boot. Somebody left. Aha. Well, that's okay. I've got something very, very odd going on uh, on my end of things here. Let me just fix that right up. Huh. I just got I just got spammed with emails plague. I don't know what's going on here exactly, but something You're getting hacked. But uh, you know it's it's entirely possible. How'd you get that? And all I've got is empty slots on my screen. Good. That's a good question. Well, sorry about the technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. As always, uh, very interesting first day here in Chair League. Um, where'd you get the Where'd you get the emails from? Uh, I think I'm just being spammed by something that's saying it's an official government thing, but it's not. No, I'm Trump. Get rid of it. Yeah, it's yeah. Can anything be good from that? It was only a matter of time, really. It was. Did I kind of snuck that in there? Uh, yeah, just just so authentically, I barely even noticed. <laughs> um, let's just hit the spam button on all this stuff, shall we? All right. I was wondering uh, why my my phone was suddenly being blown up. Uh, I'm not sure if if that would cause a DC. But uh, I don't know. So, uh, all, so all I'm seeing is empty slots. I don't know. I'm, I see I'm, them. I'm gonna go ahead and leave. If you could invite me back. All right. Actually, I could probably just jump into yours. There we go. There you go. And I will make a host. 
That better? Yes. All right, so yeah, um, we don't want the DC to affect things too much, so it, we want we want the teams to draft the same way they did before. But um, so we had, I believe it was Dahaka banned first. Yeah, Dahaka, and then you had uh, Ragnaros. Okay. And I'm assuming we have infested on the left, correct? Uh, yes, it should be infested, incorporated on the left, cloud eight on the right. So it is going to be see another Artanis uh, pick up here. First pick, Artanis. Uh, interesting choice. Uh, and we'll see what's going to be. Um... Cloud 8's a response to that. Yeah, Artanis has really been one of the top tier heroes in the game ever since they added for his ability to swap mid dash. Um, really made a big difference to his kit. Made him a very, very interesting hero in terms of frontline tanking and CCing. But it is going to be Goldan and Ariel coming out here on Braxis, which is an amazing combo. Goldan has ridiculous wave clear to be able to defend against enemy Zerg waves. And is a good solid feeder for Ariel's hope pool. So hopefully sure. uh, we'll see that coming out and see the full force of that from Cloud Eight. This is their map pick, so play clearly they knew what they wanted to do. Exactly, they did here. So they obviously have used these characters before, these um, tunes before on this map, and know exactly how to work them properly. So it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to do here. We are going to see a KT pick up here on the side of Infested Ink here. Again, with a nice CC, help out with those uh, those infested waves coming through and get, gaining uh, uh, some much needed AOE damage. Uh, and then also here, just a, an outstanding uh, player damage uh, AOE, or, uh, especially with the Phoenix. So yeah, there's going to be KT and Diablo. Um, Diablo Artanis has been something we've been seeing a lot of. Um, good solid displacement from both of these tanks. They both have the ability to really throw around enemy team members. It's very discombobulating to be attacked by either one of these guys, but particularly uh, in the combo, it can be really rough. And um, like I said, you know, KT's got good solid wave clear. He's very good on this map. Um, and uh, he's also pretty good at uh at being able to burst aoe damage which right. ariel is is decent at being able to deal with but um any healer can have a rough time having to deal with that when they're more sustained heals rather than burst heals ariel kind of falls somewhere in between we are going to see the Ragnar band uh, coming on the side of Cloud 8 here, denying the, uh, a second healer to uh, Infested. Uh, pretty much left with the Malfurion, a, a KT, Karazim, um, Lily, of course, Lily the Noob. Uh, we'll see how what we're going to see from um, Infested here on their uh, band, and it is going to be an ETC. Yeah, so each team uh, applying their separate chokeholds here. Right. Um, Rhaegar, probably one of the stronger healers to go with Artanis. Yeah. Uh, but it is going to be the Tychus pickup here. Uh, seeing those two big health pools on the other side, not surprised to see the Tychus pickup. No, it isn't. And I just noticed here on his left shoulder is a uh, portrait of Widow from Overwatch. Just noticed that, by the way. <laughs> uh, great pickup here with, again, with uh, nice sustainable damage. Uh, wave clear. Uh, also, you know, the Drill and uh, Odin. And we already see the Johanna pickup, which is a very, all, all around probably a great, great solid pickup for any any role a tank needs to play. Uh, kind of sort of appeal or sustain. Uh, Johanna fills those roles pretty pretty well. Yeah, I really like Johanna's ability to, to sit on these beacons for days right. trying to capture them. If you need one big tanky hero to sit on it, Johanna, definitely the right hero. Um, and just in general, she's good at being able to get up in your face, and and, uh, and she's also very good at peeling. 
which is going to be very important with Artanis and Diablo up front. Johanna's going to need to be peeling for these squishies on the back line. It is here. We're going to see the response here from uh, Infested Inc. here momentarily, coming down to the 10-second mark here. Uh, arguably, it will obviously be their healer and probably I would, another DPS of sorts. Uh, clearly only having KT right now, but we could see a specials come out. Yeah, a lot of options on the board here. Um, so they're going to go with Malfurion as their main healer, which I think is a great pick, and Nazebo, who uh, has slowly started to come back into the meta with his re with, with some of those reworked talents. And um, he can be a very, very good sustaining hero in the late game. If you get Nazebo to 20, he becomes a real terror nowadays with that voodoo ritual. It is. Um Standing in lanes, the lane clear. He can he can pretty much disrupt or capture anybody. He can put leave somebody in place, and then with his two ults that he has there, does a nice job here. A, a pretty good damage. So, damage wise, I think that is a pretty good pickup. But you're right, he is a little bit more uh, of a of a late game, especially since way back when his frogs were nerfed. But yeah, most people are going either with that voodoo ritual build to just make him completely uh, super tanky to the point where he has almost as much health as some of the tanks. And um, just really, really hard to kill. Um, and then he's got the spider build. Uh, so we'll have to see which one of those um, Mayoku team captain for the side of Infested Incorporated decides to go to here. But Varian, the final pickup for the side of Cloud8, uh, completing uh, probably another double front line. Most people like to go Varian. So we'll have to see who who is the solo laner for each one of these teams. I would say it's probably Artanis. Or Nazebo for the side of Infested. Yeah. Uh, right. Probably Varian, if I had to guess, for the side. I would assume so, too. That yeah. would make sense to me. Um, he has pretty good sustainability uh, and, and some pretty good escape if you build into it with his uh, um, charge. So, yeah, that puts up some pretty interesting... Um... I don't know who has it. Yeah. It's... Make a call? I guess you could say it's it's... Maruka and Nazebo puts a nice, sustain, uh, uh, sustainable in one lane where other t the, the others could be in another lane. But I don't know. Do they have enough quote unquote damage, at least in, in, the, in the early and mid game? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I'm going with Cloud8. Their, their map pick, and right off the bat, knowing who they wanted with uh, Goldan and Ariel, I, that, that's who I'm going with. But we're going to get these teams introduced. Your blue team. On the left, we have Mayoku, team captain, on playing Nazebo. Soul on Malfurion. Zoraku is going to be playing, or, or Zorat, or Zoratuk. Zoratuk on Artanis. What Silence on Kalthos and El Chakala. El Ch yeah. <laughs> oh, El Chakal on Diablo. That is Infested Incorporated. And here on the right hand side, wearing the red trunks, we got Cloud8 in the Federalist on Joe. He, Jean, and on Uriel, ba Blash on Varian, and Da on Goldan, and Oren on Tygas. Man, those were easy. Come on. Yeah, too Come bad. On, I had a couple of them, a little goofy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do see a full five man commitment there to this bottom lane to start here for the side of Cloud8. They do send Artanis up here from the side of Infest Incorporated for that solo lane, and Johanna is going to end up being the response. Um, good, good little push in there for the side of Cloud8, but ultimately, both teams not really getting a whole lot done. They're just going to both back out. Federal is getting kind of low up here already, though, against Artanis. It is, and it's interesting, they got up in the top lane, we have two tanks. Uh, our, our soloist as of right now, uh, with Joe from the side. Isn't that Cloud8 in the red, I think, and Infested is in the blue? Correct. With Artanis? Okay, got him. Just making sure I got him. You don't see that. We are seeing a pretty, you know, a kind of sort of just poking here in the in the bottom lane here, just trying to get out some minimal damage just to catch somebody out. Um, we are going to see the whip come out from Hiji on Ariel. Uh, the frogs coming out on uh, Maruku. Uh, not much going on here. Just going to kind of simultaneously just take down their lane uh, minions. Uh, and nobody really committing much of anything at this particular point. We are going to still see in the top lane here the push from Artanis and Joe as uh, they work on the top lane, and the beacons are up. In yeah, a few I, I do like Ariel as a soft counter to Diablo. Um, Ariel's whip is pretty much the only thing in the game 
that can stop Diablo mid charge from really going after you. So that's gonna right. be that's gonna be a tool that we're probably gonna see um, Heijin pulling out regularly. There's also a lot of good corners to be able to whip people into on this map, oh, but we do see the wall and the oh, root Ariel, coming out. Me, yeah, Ario gets caught out, but it ends up being Diablo that takes all of the harass there. Is going to have to back out here. And uh, right now it is going to be the side of Cloud 8 that's going to own that top beacon, but in, or the bottom beacon, but in the top lane, um, Zoratuk there on the Artanis is pretty much controlling the top lane against the Federalist. Not a whole lot that Johanna can really do in that matchup. No, there isn't here. Not a whole lot of damage coming out, especially with uh, the armor buffs that uh, Artanis can uh, uh, summon at times. So it's pretty much going to be a stalemate. Oh. And here we are. We're going to see a major push here in the bottom lane again. And it oh, is going to be go. silent going down. KT taking a little bit too much harass there. Um, and meanwhile, the chase is on. They are going full on after Diablo. The poison coming out. And uh, Malfurion's heals, you know, they just they, they have a hard time. Oh! How did he do it? How did he die? <laughs> it's the poison damage, man. Oh, is that what it was? It's, rid it's ridiculous. Oh, my God. So it looks like uh, Artanis, the uh, Blash, uh, uh, is building more of a bruiser, obviously, role here, getting that quest build. So we're going to see probably dual blades come out as a result uh, of here. That will add some major, major damage on the side of Cloud8 here. And nice little zombie walls coming out here from Nizibu. Uh, as Cloud8 was coming to look for a kill there. Yeah, nice job of capturing these beacons, and the Federalist is going to be able to block up in this top lane. That is going to result in a full... Uh, Practically, a, a, well, it is. They, they are going to have it. Um, it is going to be a 6% over for the side of Infested Incorporated, but that's not really a whole lot compared to the full Zerg push that's coming in this bottom lane. And Goldan and, and, and company here are ready to really push in on this as here they come are. the zerg in this bottom lane and the two cannons were out of ammo when they initiated that getting no help there left for the can inner cannon and the tower here this should be make quick work of this here uh, on this first wave of um, uh, of the infested yeah the banelings are going to go ahead and just run themselves right into that healing well to take it down uh the ultralisks turn and take down the fort and uh, that is going to be the first fort of the game going very, very early here. And nearly a full level lead at this point for the side of Cloud8. Right here, you can tell that this is definitely one of their Cloud8's favorite maps to play on. They, they are pretty much dominating, uh, you know, rotations and stuff and how to work this map with their, with their uh, uh, player choices here. Real nice job so far here. And it looks like they're going to look for camps now here now that the, the Infested Boys are finished. Well, and I'll tell you, Plague, I felt like Infested Incorporated did a nice job of being able to hold off in that bottom lane uh, more, more or less. And I thought they had a decent uh, solo lane matchup in the top, but at the end of the day, Johanna was able to win that. We didn't really see how, but um, but I think that was really a big factor, is once Johanna got that Laws of Hope in, at level 4, was really able to get the self-healing and the self-sustain out that Artanis doesn't have, once they won that top lane, it only took a little while for uh, Ariel's healing to be able to slowly but surely bring up their team and keep their team topped up to be able to pressure them off. Malfurion's going to run out of mana at some point, but Ariel never has to back for mana. That's the big difference maker here. It is. Absolutely it is. We are going to see the bruisers come up for the side of the Infested Ink here as they're going to begin to push down. Nice little job, even though the wall is down here, but hopefully they can get a little bit of a push here with those much-needed bruisers uh, uh, as they clear up this top lane. Yeah, they're going to be pushing back, but the uh, the lanes have essentially swapped here. We have uh, Artanis and Johanna yet again soloing now in the bottom lane. Oh, we got uh, a 4v4 in the top, though Kael'thas a little bit slow on the rotation here, but it does look like they're going to at least attempt to push these in a little bit or support them in some manner, try to catch somebody out. Goldan, pretty far out here, is going to end up being the target uh, for at least a flame strike there. Uh, but the turn here from Blast as they go after Diablo, these teams just kind of poking at each other, trying to find somebody out, not really finding any pay dirt at this point. 
No, like you said, they're just kind of poking here until the next uh, beacons do open up, and it is going to be in about 10 seconds here. Uh, we'll see how both teams are going to play this top. This one looks to be the most contested here, and we'll see how Artanis and Johanna deal with the bottom uh, uh, one here. If Artanis is going to uh, get the first uh, beacon down at the bottom, or it looks like Joe is. Artanis is coming up, possibly, to help out here in the top lane. Yeah, they're going to choose to go after this 10, this, uh, this 5v5 right here before the side of oh, Cloud8 is able to get oh, 10. And a huge swap, swap there from Zoraktu. Wow. Gonna get, yeah, gonna get Tychus but out. At what cost? But at what cost? <laughs> at what cost is right. You see the health bars being staying very, very healthy in general. They are gonna get uh, Varian down uh, very, very low. But a nice whip there to be able to get him out of trouble. And it's, again, it's this Ario pickup, man. Goldan. Feeding Ariel to hope, keeping those health bars nice and high. And now with level 10, here comes the Zerg in the top lane. This is going to be a rough, rough defense without level 10 for Infested Incorporated. It is, absolutely it is. Uh, arguably could push all the way into the keep and taking the keep down, depending on how uh, Cloud8 plays this. But uh, they are down a man here. As are two actually from Malfurion and KT coming back in. Yeah, Johanna actually is going to go ahead and break off and go soak that bottom lane. Uh, going to try to continue this XP advantage that they've built up here. The swap is going to miss Dash from Aura in there to be able to dodge it. Not going to be tricked twice by that. They do take down the sidewall to be able to have the option to at least try to go in here. But uh, the Horrify is going to oh, come out. caught out with the Horrify. The taunt, the stun into the wall from Ariel, and he is going to get completely blown up. By that Draken laser drill and all of the other effects coming out. The Zerg also getting in on that a little bit. The zombie wall, not enough to really be able to do a whole lot there uh, to try and get him back in. And, and you're right, it was all the horrify there. That was great horrify uh, from from uh, Day. Day? Da, 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 uh, yeah, these da, names, da, man. D, D. His name is D. Big D. D it is. D, D Dizzle. Are we, are we gonna make him a make a uh, given giving him the D joke right now? I don't know. <laughs> give, him, <laughs> give him the, the big D. <laughs> the big D. Big D. <laughs> I, would, I would say if, if, if ever there was, yeah, it would definitely yeah, be that. Yeah, the opportunity uh, for the D joke. That, the right the there. horrify was probably it right there. Yeah, the, yeah, you saw the big D. That's right. Uh, welcome to the chair league, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, really. This is how it is out here with us, uh, with Jay Zan and myself. Talking about D's and big D's and horrify. <laughs> and how Trump is making America great again. Yeah, well, uh, that one not so much, <laughs> but, you know. Not so much. So that one was a little less subtle. No, nah, you gotta throw it in every now and again. Yeah, yeah. Reminder of all the, all the lovely things that's going on right now. But anyway. <laughs> Both teams rotating out. Getting their soak on, uh, even talent tiers for the moment, but level 13, just a smidgen away here for Cloud8. Yet again, uh, mastery of rotations here. They realize that they saw that rotation in the top, and they're they're so close to 13. They're going to try and pressure in with this Bruiser camp at least a little bit. Safe rotation here from the side of Infested Incorporated. I actually would have loved to see them try to rotate a little bit more aggressively there right before that 13 was picked up. But could have, uh, absolutely could have. But a little bit Down too late now. Yep. Mm -hmm. It is. And we'll see how they're going to rotate back here. Uh, looks like both camps are going to be down. Uh, the one top camp is going to be open here. And they are going to reposition themselves into the lanes until the beacons are active again. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go right back to this bottom lane and continue to pressure. They realize that uh, that yet their, their Zerg push is going to be in this bottom lane. So anything they here can they do to this front pressure. wall... Yeah, and they do not have Johanna here. This is a 4v5 with this rotation. They are caught out. The drill is going to come down very early here, focusing on Diablo, trying to get some of that harass out onto him. The Horrify comes out, only hits one, uh, but we are going to see Artanis going down here with the uh, taunted in there, and that Draken laser drill able to just completely take him out. Johanna is starting oh, to rotate Ariel. down, and Ario oh, getting very, very low. Ariel. The health bars. Or it, get on. Tychus! Someone get Tychus! So many, so very low oh here, gosh. but it is going to be the turn. Malfurion's going to go down, and uh, the team just healthy enough to be able to pull that off, Plague. But uh, just, just in general, a little bit of a lack of focus here from Infested Incorporated. They just couldn't get one down. 
they had they had Tychus dead to rice there because he was left behind, but he, the chase was on there, right around that little uh, uh, berm-looking cluster there, and they just didn't see him in time until it was too late. Varian gonna go ahead and drop the banner. Just, uh, maybe for Let's BM's go. sake, I'm not really sure. Uh, exactly. but, uh, and, uh, uh, insult to injury there. <laughs> they are gonna go after this room. camp, but here comes Infested Incorporated oh, to swap out on Ariel, and that's gonna be an easy kill. Oh, well, maybe an easy kill. There it is. Uh, the charge in, but, uh, the damage has been done here with these, with this full Zerg push. Gonna be coming out of the bottom. Here they come. It is gonna be answered to immediately buy it fast and incorporate it as they try and take this down but they got to be careful these zerg pushes will chew you up as diablo is finding out right now yeah, exactly but it is smart of them to they engage this zerg wave here versus under the tower where the the the, the, the door and both uh, cannons are down here so a very smart decision here engaging this right now and it's already down with minimal damage taken yeah, ultimately, this is going to serve as a good opportunity for Infested Incorporated. They do clear out that full Zerg push. They get to the level 13 talent tier. They are on even talent tiers here for at least another level um, that we're going to have to see Cloud8 trying to scrape out. They can back up, breathe a little bit, get these camps, try and even out the lanes, and uh, have another go at this. This game is not over yet. No, it's not. Absolutely, it isn't. Um, as we're seeing both top camps be uh, uh, taken by the prospective teams. And it looks like Joe is down back in the bottom lane here doing a bit of a solo push. And right away, Infested Incorporated sees that. They're going to rotate down to try and force the issue a little bit. Varian, a little bit far away from this in terms of trying to make this an engagement. But uh, we will see Cloud8 going ahead and backing out of that situation. And again, the uh, banner coming down, if nothing else, just for <laughs> vision, vision's sake, I suppose. I guess. That's funny. <laughs> uh, oh, it's... a little bit of a rotation here. Oh, uh, yeah. Out here? I don't know. He's going to try and swap somebody, it seems like. No. Well, no, they're a little late for a the late, camp. A little late on that. Yeah, they're going to just go ahead and back up. Plus, uh, again, with that banner, you know, it's not like they didn't see it coming, so. Right, that's true. Diablo caught out here. Oh, yeah, completely caught out. You're right. He's going to get stunned, taunted, ton of damage coming out on him, but that's not exactly the target that you want to try and focus oh, down with all that help, the, the, the swap in. But we are going to see the... Uh, we are going to see the Aegis coming down to be able to save him. He'll be able to turn. Ton of damage still going down onto Varian, but he's able to keep himself healed up enough for them to at least be able to turn. It is a two for one so far. Three for one, and the chase is still on as the Federalist is going to try and get in. And the Ice Block, not quite enough to save them. A four for one exchange here, Plague. They'll give up Varian for that exchange any day of the any week. Any day of the week, exactly. That Joe just kept going like you said just just for, you know could would not go down for days excellent healing on the side of uh, of uh of he he and, and the federalist doing an outstanding job of, of, of manipulating joe right there way to go there man. very very nice yeah and yet again it's those ariel heals where they're con he's constantly right. being fed by goldan here and it's, it's just uh it's just a little bit silly again the swap gonna miss a uh, nice juke there uh, by Big D down here in this bottom lane, being able to get away from both the gravity laps and the swap. They do push that in a little bit, getting a little bit more harassment out on it, but uh, ultimately they are going to get this full Zerg push once again. Three for three so far on these Zerg pushes. It has been all Cloud 8 so far, Plague. We're going to have to see something out of Infested Incorporated if they want to win right. this one. This could be it right here. But they're just they're, they're, they're very, very passive. They're not going after anybody. They're not trying to flank or get around or try to catch somebody out. They're meeting. Like I know the Zerg is, the wave is up, but they're meeting at everybody head on. And you can't do that against Cloud 9. Cloud 9 has already shown that going head on against them isn't going to work. So they are going to go ahead and push in. And the taunt goes out. On to silent. Kale Thoughts goes down. Uh, not not so much in a blaze of glory, but just goes down really fast. Uh, we're going to see uh, the, the whip out on Diablo to push him back. That's two. And they are looking for more here. Play Cloud 8 is on the march. It is here. This could be the G's. In fact, I'm going to call it where it is. There it is. A little bit of an early button press, but Plague is pretty, is. Uh, pretty confident pretty with the Zerg push that it's going down. And sure enough, the core has run out of shields. Down to 
There's nothing they can really do to stop this for the side of Infested Incorporated. Cloud8 picking up a very quick, very decisive victory here on Braxis Holdout. Yeah, really nice job here. And honestly, uh, Jay, we saw two really well-played, well-dominated maps uh, from their perspective teams, Cloud8 uh, t right now, and um, um, Infest. In, no, well, who was it? I forget the name already. Yeah, that's not surprising. It isn't. Illusion of Esports. Illusion, me, yeah. Illusion of Esports. Yeah, both teams <laughs> uh, had the map picks, and they just came out swinging right away, not afraid to fight. And we didn't DC this time. There we go. Nice. We are, and here is the dominancy right here. Red team being Cloud8 with 12 kills. And a pretty low number of kills considered uh, how everything played out. It seemed like a lot more. And to four kills on the side of Infested Inc. here. Very, very dominant. Uh, the... Um, Hero damage goes to Gul'dan, no surprise there, followed up by a Kael'thas on um, Infested Inc. So good job for both both teams that won today. And we also, I look forward to tip of the cap to the two teams that lost in Infest and Honey Badger. We hope to see you guys soon. You guys did play. You guys didn't quit. Appreciated that. We've seen a lot of times, Jay, where, where teams would just kind of give up or just let it go. But both teams tried to stay in it as, as, as all the way until the end. So that's really, really good to see as we open up a new season for Chair League. Yeah, that's something I really like about Chair League. All the teams are here to play. They're here to do their best. And regardless of what's going on, they always uh, put in their all. And, and you, you never see a team give up like that. You know, down multiple talent tiers, they still go for it. They still do all they can. And, um, you know, again, you're right. Big tip of the hat to both to to all four of these teams coming out. Right. Showing us, uh, so, showing us exactly what they've been doing in the off season. And uh, what they've been practicing, showing us some some cool combos, and uh, it's it's been a pleasure as always to cast for you guys. And thank you very much Absolutely. for uh, joining us for these chair league matches. If you enjoyed what you see, go ahead and hit that follow button. It's a big help to me, and it's a good way to follow chair league. I do a lot of casting for them, as well as uh, some Heroes of the Storm streaming uh, on my own. Thank you very much for. So thank you very much, Plague, for coming out and joining me once again. It's good to have the band back together, buddy. It is, isn't it? It definitely is. I've missed it. Definitely have. Uh, I'm glad to be back at it uh, uh, here with you and, and casting and, and, and playing some more uh, heroes. It's always a great time. One of my favorite games, and it's it's always fun to bring it to bring uh, this this game to like-minded people who enjoy it just as much as we do. So thank you guys for everything. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah, right. Actually, uh, tomorrow night we'll be casting a Division One match here. Balloon grant us strength versus Tire <laughs> Fire Pyre. Gonna be at 8:40 p.m. PST tomorrow night. I hope to see you guys then, and uh, have a great night, guys. All right, take care, guys.